All right, KISS Army, welcome to the KISS FAQ Podcast. Thank you for giving us your time today and letting us into your head. I hope we don't do any damage. This is a KISS-related podcast by the board for the board. We hope that you enjoy. All right, welcome to episode 491 of the KISS FAQ Podcast. We are live today. I want to thank everyone who's been able to take the opportunity to join us today. I can't have the uh, chat window up quite yet, so I know... Uh, actually, yeah, let's give this a try because I can always screw things up. Uh, Tatiana, Bell. Or Titania. Titania. Yeah. Okay. Learn how to read, Mr. Gill. Uh, Ronnie Parker. Kiss FAQ. Oh, that's me. Uh, Thomas Alltop. Austin. Tim G. Adam. You know, thank you all for joining us. Hey, Welshman. All right. So we, we've got a whole bunch of people who are going to be watching live. Um, you know, the chairman of the board has told us that we're going to do a topic today, and uh, we'll get to that shortly. But I did want to go over some of the news, some of the purchases. Who bought some kiss shit this week? Because I did. I bought Eric Carr's Slaughter demo, which was actually Mark Slaughter, pre Slaughter, 85, 86. Uh, and it's got some notes written in it by Gene Simmons. So it's it's nothing that people haven't heard. But it's just cool to get something that was his with uh, Gene's handwriting. Mark, you took delivery of something this week, did you not? You're usually, uh, you know, not one who. <clears throat> I, I'm shocked you bought that. Uh, I'm kind of shocked I bought it too, but in the sense that I've been one of these people now who's. Uh, buying these things as they come on line i did take purchase of the psycho circus album uh i did it did arrive here in canada actually it was funny it, i got a message of shipment very early and uh, it, it, it took a little while longer than i thought it was going to to get here there's the back in case anybody's interested and uh it looks just like psycho circus yeah it is the inner sleeve oh that's nice the, and then on the other side, of course, you have all the yeah. lyrics. The lyrics. And, yeah. And uh, it's funny. They, they, they don't have any updated mastering information, which makes me leads me to believe that they use the same mastering that was from the original, yeah. most likely. Why well, pay so. for something again when you've already paid for it once? And yeah. Do they have the correct uh, players on it? Or is uh, our favorite person <laughs> on the FAQ uh, going to be annoyed? Uh, I think everybody's. I think everybody's correct on here. I, I'm pretty sure. Now the thing is, I'm very pleased with the way the vinyl turned out. It actually turned out very nicely. So uh, there you go. That, that does look nice. It looks like the top of a cloud looking down from a jet plane. Yeah, that's exa- hey, that's you know what, Julian? That's a perfect way to describe it. Cloud it, tops. It, it turned out really nice. I was actually, you know, I wasn't expecting it to be because you know. Kiss are known to disappoint, especially in these kind of things. So, but I'm very oh. pleased to say that it looks fantastic, and uh, I haven't played it yet, but I will probably play it uh, sometime this, you know, before the weekend comes. Uh, we have a long weekend coming because we do have Canadian Thanksgiving this weekend coming. So, uh, yeah, I'll probably spin it. You know, I'll probably you know dread listening to it halfway through when I started getting to all those classic songs that we talked about earlier that are on this album. But I am glad that I got this and, uh, you know, it's going to be put in my collection with all the other colored stuff that came. So I am happy that I did get it and uh, there was no damage to it. So I can't complain. Kiss Online have been pretty good so far. And nice. uh, I you wanted know. to ask you something else about vinyl mm-hmm. because I know you got the test pressings for your new album and how is that listening going mm-hmm. and have you completed the task of listening to all the test pressings? Yes, I have just completed listening to all of them. Uh, they sound fantastic. I mean, all the test pressings I've got sound good. I've never had a bad test pressing. But the thing is, this time I did a little extra legwork before I sent it over to uh, Kevin, who does the uh, lacquer cutting for me. And uh, we, we sent some info back and forth about some ideas. <clears throat> and uh, long story short, it sounds really good on vinyl, like really good. I was so happy that this turned out the way it turned out on vinyl. I'm looking forward to sending people's test pressings out to them. And I'm looking no, forward to getting no the fixes. final versions. No, no, f- no. Nope. So it's not uh, a single go fix. That's good. Well, that, that, that helped six because months. Yeah, well, th- cause that helped because before he cut it, he sent me back his opinion saying, you know, what about if we try this? Maybe we can do this and that. And I said, okay, well, what about this and that? So we just buffered each other a little bit with information. 
and then we went for it. He sent me the acetate test. I was happy with the acetate. Then he did the test pressings, and the test pressings sound fantastic. So I'm happy. Awesome. I'm very happy for you, Mark. That's very cool. And look forward to catching up on your latest project, uh, Gemini Update. Ken, now, last week, Kiss was on TV in Australia. Yeah. Uh, opened the AFL show. So before we get to <coughs> your topic today, Ken, I want to just go around everyone's opinions on the three songs we knew were going to be shouted out loud, which was a minor hit in Australia. I Was Made For Loving You, which was, I think, their second biggest hit. I don't have it written down in front of me. I think that went to number two, and Shandy went to number one <laughs> the following year. So still a massive hit, and obviously rock and roll all night. Right. Um, I saw Kiss on TV in the last week, so that's really cool. Uh, what did you think of that? The, the performance, the kind of atmosphere and everything that you'd like to pontificate on. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it was cool, you know, that they got on TV and got to be um, kind of like the Super Bowl, more or less, for Australia um, with their football league. Um, and, you know, the only thing that, the only things that, I don't know if you could say bothered me, but, um, the, seems they work they look better in a in a dark kind of arena environment than on a huge field like that um so a lot of it was stark i mean they had a lot of fire going off you know flame pots and stuff like that but uh it just looked better and in you know the dark light Ooh, I dark said that. light see what he dark did light. there <laughs> see i didn't even mean to do that but um yeah that sure. that just kind of thing, but when when all the you know the kids came out and stuff and dancing you know to the kiss songs and that that was cool. I, I enjoyed that. I think it's it's a cool little thing to have them involved um, doing that. Um, the only other thing is obviously they played it safe and did some you know lip syncing, um, mm -hmm. and it's obvious to me. This makes it more obvious to me that Gene does not normally lip sync in regular concerts because he's a bad lip syncer. He's not good at he's not good at lip syncing. He, you know, Paul's Paul's become a pretty Expert. darn good at it. Had, had, a, yeah. had a bit more practice at the art. Actually, a lot more practice than Gene. So obviously Gene is uh, needs more practice. But uh yeah, you can obviously tell that. Um but I understand they didn't want any screw ups. I guess because there's been screw ups in the past, supposedly, you know, meatloaf it's, performance. It's live or, TV. There can't or, be screw or, ups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't have those. So uh, I think, you know, it was, it was fun, you know, to see them, uh, you know, get out there in front of a big audience. Yeah, the tracks are what they are at this point. And again, it was a TV performance, so I wasn't too shocked by it. I only watched it today. I mean, obviously, I grabbed them off the, uh, the AFL footy show. Uh, number one, it was very exciting. You know, the Super Bowl, the last one, what, had 80,000 at it or less? And this was over 100,000 people they of, yeah. performed to, in quotes, um, <laughs> which, which is very cool. And the thing that struck me when watching it was how much better it looked for a daytime performance than the last time they did the pre-show to a big sporting event that I recall um, watching and taping, which was the Super Bowl. Super Bowl, yeah. And just the color, they got it, the production values very right for a daytime show, I thought. I thought they did a great job. There was one guy who was standing next to a cameraman with a clipboard who, who was, you know, <laughs> I, get him out of there. But the camera angles and work, other than the guitar smash goof, which they missed the cue yeah. that and missed the smash. Um, but I'm like, big deal. Because there were so many great camera angles. Mark's showing a lot of them. The great camera work, some great angles. And you're absolutely right. The Kiss Kids, the next generation, or not even that gen the next generation, it doesn't matter. But they were dressed up and they were super fun. And how great for those kids and those parents of those kids to be a part of, you know, something yeah. as momentous as, you know, the final and getting to perform like that. And the little mini ace that, you know, yeah. Tommy, Tommy was kind of playing of. Mm -hmm. um, I, again, I, I was smiling throughout that. And throughout the whole thing, I was looking at the audience, you know, there was some good reaction. There was some, you know, just 
polite nodding of heads and there was you know some bored get on with the footy you know we want to see blood and teeth please well not even please get on with it um so very very cool mark i think you're frozen so i'll keep rambling on as long as i can but i think it's going to be a lost cause this footy is frozen yeah the kiss kids kill mark's (laughs) internet connection but there were some pretty unkind reviews which just goes par for the course but you know what mostly good but some some bad ones yeah it's it's like screw it normal my my band was on tv closing a major they're never going to get to do a super bowl halftime show they're never going to get to no they're not another pre-game show you know they're the wrong demographic we're the wrong demographic you know i I think the only band the only heavy metal or hard rock band i could really see you know being able to get in a foot in the door for the nfl would probably be the foo fighters or metallica oh god no 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 more metallica um on on that sort of ship but again again, i'd be excited if metallica did for that matter but you you two playing that uh new vegas do you see the videos? For I that? saw some of the videos for that. That was interesting. Um, Their god awful new song. Well, that it's brand new shitty. song. Then? Yeah. Yeah, it's all, okay. All, all pretty shitty. All right, so let's get into today's topic. Uh, we're gonna wait, and well, we're not gonna wait for Mark. He'll uh, rejoin as soon as he works through his uh, technical <laughs> gremlins and speak of the devil. Hey, Mark, just in time for the topic. So yeah. welcome back, and thank you for showing the uh, video while you're doing it. Can I? So, can I just say something real quick, please? Uh, I was going to say just about the whole thing about uh, the performance there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Gene was horrendously bad at lip syncing, but overall, I thought it was pretty good. Uh, you know, it looked good. Uh, I, I know I'm going to get egged for saying this, but I, I thought the the four kids that came up on stage they 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 were cute. I thought that was a good thing bringing them up on the stage there. But I think they should have kept it at that. I, I don't know. The, all those kids are dancing. I don't know if it's just me. People respond in the gallery if you think this is true or not, or if you have the courage to admit this. I don't know. I found it a bit disturbing. I, I, I was like a weird, bad dream seeing all those kids. Because some of the really? faces these kids were making when they were dancing. It was it great. Like it was like Norman a, Gunston. It, it looked like something out of a horror <laughs> show. I was like, what the hell is going on here? Like Some of these kids' faces were like, wow. But look it's good that it's good that the next generation are the you know army. into kiss if uh, but i really wonder how many of those kids on there on that stage actually even knew who the hell kiss were uh, I, maybe i'm being they surprised do now. You know? yeah well maybe now, i'll be surprised they maybe they you know maybe they actually are fans now and that'd be great you know at least in australia the you know the kiss name will live on but you know i don't know i, I don't know i just found a little Mark will be but, it, but it was but it was cute, but it was good it was good though <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mark, what's the biggest national sporting event in Canada yearly? Um, because national, well, because I guess you, the, you, you guys play in the NHL. You play yeah, in we, the, Stanley Cup is obviously the, big. The, the baseball yeah. thing, the um, MLB. Yeah, you know, when the when the, the Jays make the, the play, when the Jays make the playoffs, then it's a big deal, but uh, not this they, year uh, again. But uh, you know, uh, I guess the next thing would be the yeah. would be the Grey Cup. Most likely, so. No, there we go. All right, so um, we we do have a topic. Let me get rid of that. Sorry, Ronnie, I left your comment up. Uh, we do have a topic today. I was just going to do topics from the board again, and Ken was like, "No, I've got a topic." Why yeah, he was very very pushy with this topic. Oh, well, yeah, I, I, I thought pushy. it was an excellent idea, but I think we have to lead in with a commercial. The Kiss Double Platinum Album, a tribute unprecedented in music history. Here's Neil Bogart. For the success story of the decade, Casablanca honors Kiss with Double Platinum. Gene Simmons, Paul Stanley, Peter Chris, and Ace Frehley. 20 Double Platinum songs remixed and brand new Sprutter 78, Kiss Double Platinum. All right, so that that actually has very little to do with today's topic other than um, Ken suggested, and let me read his topic. 
can we please try the double <laughs> platinum two topic instead of topics on the board? I have an idea going way back. Come on, Julian, get with it. Um, I did not say that. <laughs> but here we go. Um, Construct a double a double platinum two from Dynasty Unmasked, The Elder Creatures, Look It Up, Animal Eyes, and Asylum. So following a similar format to the original one encompassing the first six studio albums, uh, Double Platinum 2 would, of course, include songs from that second batch of six studio albums. Um, you know, of course, there was this release 35 years ago, um, which did not go anywhere near being a uh, a proper double platinum too i mean it was you know double platinum really stands alone or, or stands on its own very well yes. whereas um you know smashes thrashes and hits it's okay for what it is but it certainly is no double platinum ken you know what was your thinking behind that was it because smashes sucks um and double platinum really nailed the format because the new song sucked um well I think, you know, it was a while ago I, that I came up with that idea. Um, it's probably years ago now. Um, but um, I was thinking, you know, it would have been cool uh, if they continued that. It's kind of like they, you know, continued to live one, two, three, that sort of stuff. But if they, you know, took those albums from starting from, um, you know, Dynasty through Asylum and made a double platinum two at you know 1986 and release it then and then if they would have done of course a double platinum three for the albums coming after but <clears throat> i just thought uh what they could do is it kind of gives a broad uh music uh you know to some new listeners you know kind of how i got into kiss when i I was getting into Kiss. That was one of the first ones I bought. It might have been the second album I bought, possibly. Um, and then that kind of gave me an idea of all their music that they've been releasing before that. And then I, you know, started buying the albums and stuff. So it's kind of the same thing. Um, and doing some kind of a, a remixing, even remixing, <clears throat> just like they did with some of the stuff uh, back on Double Platinum. So I thought it would have been cool for them to do it, release one right at that time. You know, I would have bought it. Well, you know, you know what the main principal problem with that idea, though, is Ken, right? None of those albums were anywhere near platinum selling. Like the elder, you know, a plat double platinum to come on. It didn't even, didn't even go gold in six weeks. <clears throat> yeah, Dynasty was platinum. That's the only one, probably. I don't think it, the Living first album was gold was, at the time. Was, Asylum was gold at the time, and Killers wasn't even plastic. You know? Yeah, but I'm, on double when Double Platinum came out, uh, I don't think the first album or two or three were were platinum yet. I think that yeah, but they were doing gold. it mainly off of the all they, other three. They, yeah, yeah, they still aren't. They're still only certified. It's gold. just a, it's just it's just a name. It's not saying yeah. oh everything's fine, but it's 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 just <laughs> a name. I mean, <laughs> which is fine. I, I'm fine yeah. with. Double Platinum. I think it's yeah, Double similar. Platinum made sense in 1978 as an album title because in the trades, all of, and I think it's even in Circus, uh, some of their, well, a lot of their albums were celebrated as Platinum, 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 you know, for a live destroyer. Right. Of, I, I know mm -hmm. I saw Rock and Roll Over in that. So it really became a, a big deal. They even continued it into the 80s with Animal Eyes. Um, I did see a trade ad with that big platinum. I think it was in the same font, Mark. Or type. Sorry, what was the question? Well, we could have, we could have changed the. I mean, if you want to be picky, Mark, you could say uh, <laughs> you could have called it almost platinum. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know, at first I, I was appalled at the idea of mixing dynasty. Like dynasty. you say, Mark. You know, Come lies on. About, kiss lies about everything, so. Yeah, exactly. It, it just adds to the hype and the lies and all that stuff. <laughs> yes. All right. So we, we had some basic rules here. It had to be kept to 20 songs. It had mm -hmm. to be four sides um, of five songs, uh, just like Double Platinum. And after mm -hmm. that, it's all bets were off. Mark, how did you approach assembling your list? Was it uh, a difficult task? And how did you structure your your albums? Um, well, basically what I did was 
I, I put the songs on that I felt were the standouts to me. You know, I'm sure this will change from person to person who are watching it and even amongst us, most likely some of the songs we won't maybe agree on. But I always thought that the one thing I liked about Double Platinum was that they had the obvious songs on there, but they had a couple of songs on there that maybe weren't so obvious, you know, and on Double Platinum. You know, who would have thought that they would have put 100,000 years on there or they would have put Rock Bottom on there, you know, but those those songs appeared on there and that's great, you know, that they, that they did that. So uh, I kind of approached it where I put some songs I think would be pretty obvious to put on a sort of record like this and a couple ones that maybe you might be overlooked. So I thought that they were important, and 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 they were songs that I liked as well. They had, that had to be kind of the content, the, the you know, that had to be in contention too in my mind. That if I actually enjoyed these songs, you know. Did you skip any albums? Did you say I can't put anything from the Elder on this album because it's a problem? no, no, no. I I put stuff even from uh, you know, from from uh, the Elder on there. <laughs> uh, I didn't do David, any David, recording. David's gonna have to wait to find out, though. Yeah. I didn't, but but we'll see. We'll see okay. what happens. Uh, by the way, in San Francisco, it's Fleet Week this week, so we're gonna have the F-16s, whatever they are, buzzing the neighborhood, practicing for the weekend. Um, I was just watching Diane Feinstein's funeral on TV, and oh, they yeah. were buzzing uh, during the speakers of wow. that of the funeral being broadcast as well. So I was up on my roof trying to grab a photo of them with my telephoto lens. Not good. I, I can't track one of those suckers. So <laughs> How, how did you approach your selections? Yeah, I tried to approach mine more like uh, the original Double Platinum um, with, I guess, and I'm going to, uh, should I say it? The, you know, the first the first song. Um, oh, I'll hang on. There we go. I don't want to. Oh, gosh, we're in Round trouble. One. Um, I'll, <laughs> say, I'll save it for uh, soon. Uh, I'll let you know. But I want it to be more like the original Double Platinum. A uh, couple of things I did is I made maybe uh, I did things the same way to a degree as they did on the original Double Platinum. Plus, um, regarding, you know, Love Gun was the only song um, that appeared on Double Platinum because it was just the most recent album and they're not going to put all those, those, you know, a few songs in that they want people to still buy that album. So I, I did the same kind of thing with asylum, um, music. Uh, that's, that was my thinking there so that I did the same thing. So sorry guys, but that's what, what a I crime did. That is. Mm. Okay. Well, why don't you get us started with, okay. uh, you know, side A of your okay. record and explain the rationale between why okay. those songs get on the first disc because those are the first songs um, okay. some newbies would discover Kiss to. Yeah, so so I started my disc or side one vinyl um, uh, with "I Was Made for Loving You" 1986. Actually, it's it's "I Was Made for Loving You" '86. So there you could see David. Uh, I did like a strutter thing. I wanted to make a more rocking version of I Was Made For Loving You. So I re-record with the current lineup at the time, um, you know, with Bruce and Eric Carr, uh, and make it more rocking like they would have done maybe in con you know, concerts, more rocking. Um, so that was my thinking there. I wanted to do the same kind of thing. It was a, a nod to Strutter 78. Um, so that's what I did. So that was the lead off song there. And then I went into uh, a world without heroes as number two, and obviously, obviously from the elder and then heaven's on fire as number three, naked city was my fourth song on side one and then ends with talk to me. I needed ace representation david approves all right david <laughs> <laughs> so somebody approves yeah so mark you you seem to approach yours by bringing a battering ram to side a of your <clears throat> double platinum two collection is that an accurate description of how you went about yours 
Yeah, yeah, I, I would say that that's pretty much how I kind of started. I wanted to start it off with a bang, you know, wanted to, you know, bring out some of the heavy hitters at the beginning. So, of course, you know, there's only, in my opinion, there's only one way to start this double plot, and that's with Creatures of the Night. And it, of course, has to be not the remix version that came out. It has to be the original mm -hmm. from the 82 uh, version. Uh, then, of course, here's a song that I thought would probably be overlooked by most people. So I thought, and it's a great song, and I, I think it deserves to be on there. And that's Charisma. It's the second song on there. And much to people's surprise, I did include something from The Elder, that album that is touched by that man who has name I will not speak on this channel. Uh, and that he, he I put, picked The Oath from that album, because that's probably mm -hmm. one of the most rocking songs from that album. Then, of course, one of my favorite records, which I'm representing again with the shirt, you know, it came up again. It was it was laundry not long ago, so I washed it again. So it came up again in the rotation. So glad you uh, washed. Sorry, I'm glad you washed it. Yeah. Yes, I, I washed it in, in cold, so the colors won't fade. Yeah. Uh, and uh, from this fantastic album is a song that I'm sure Ken will uh, Ken will uh, approve of this song, which is the Naked City. Uh, is a fantastic song on there that definitely needs to be put on such a record. And of course, end off the side with a Gene Simmons classic. Now, the thing was, I, I was I was pondering whether to use the split vocal Paul and Gene version, but I decided to go with the Lick It Up version of Not For The Innocent. Yeah, they probably didn't even mm -hmm. remember that they had that yeah. um, in 1986. Right. Exactly. Hi, Ken. Hey, Ken's on the board. All right, so yeah, this is a double platinum two released in 1986, containing the six studio albums before, and that was for the benefit of anyone joining us in the middle of this. Um, I'm surprised by the number of Gene songs on Mark's first side of the album. It that starts really, off get pretty darn good to me. Yeah, yeah. so <laughs> we'll have to see where it goes. Now, I had the benefit of seeing everyone's list before I kind of did my own, so I had to do a little bit of last-minute juggling because I'm going to open side A with Nowhere to Run, the mm. remix version from Shh, Creatures of the Night because cheater. you didn't you didn't mention Killers. And I'm yeah, pretty I didn't. Sure, Yeah, you didn't you didn't say that. So, uh, I didn't want to do I did not want to do a re-record. <laughs> because I thought that was trite um, and unoriginal. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but bombing run commences. Open fire. But I go from nowhere to run into I Was Made For Loving You, because I want to get that song out of the way quickly, uh, which is why it's followed by Shandy, because mm. I got to have both of those on this, and I just want them over and done with. Plus, I tried to start all of my, uh, yeah, it's going to be like that all show. 24, 260, prior off of our. I'm like not even a, well, what I'm a mile from the bridge. So they're doing all their runs under or over or whatever they do. Oh, nice. It, it's pretty cool. Um, and then I finish off the side one of my double platinum two with two creature songs. I'm going to use the 85 remix of Creatures of the Night Mark because that's what they would have in the can and still be wanting to push in 1986. So Maybe, logically, yeah. That's what they would be using. And I finish up that side with, well, Gene, War Machine. Yeah. Because I decide by the time I got to that point in the structure that I'm like, oh, I better have a Gene song or Ken's going to tell me off. All right, <laughs> Ken, move us into your second LP or yeah. side B second of side your two. first LP. I just, <clears throat> I'd just like to say that I, I did have a weird order. Um, and so what I did is I originally – had a certain order it's kind of random and then there was too much uh too much paul here too much Gina. so i i lit like uh the software <laughs> like excel um sort it for me uh randomly <laughs> randomly sort it until mm -hmm. i found something that okay i'll go with that and then i still had to move a couple around but anyway um side b uh for the vinyl is it leads off with thrills in the night uh, number two followed by charisma followed by lick it up and then dirty living for get that peter song in there and then that side ends with i from the elder you know how happy i was to see dirty living because i didn't put in that song, song and i feel pretty 
pretty guilty for not including it. I thought that was a great pick. And uh, again, you know, I was like looking at your guys' homework going, oh, that was good. So, and now I find it's just randomized. So I'll point, erase those points. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, Mark, what's your, uh, your side B? So my side B, for, for people who are you know paying attention, and I, I'm pretty sure, I, you know, Julian seems to be a very, you know, attentive to detail sort of guy. So I'm guessing that he probably clued into my side B what was going on here. Uh, it opens with Heaven's on Fire, which, of course, is a great song from Animal Eyes. That deserves to be on any greatest hits sort of album. Followed by Tears Are Falling, which is probably one of my favorite songs off of Asylum. Great album. And uh, I understand Ken's theory with, you know, not using much or anything from it, but I disagree and totally and and totally use uh, this as a platform to further push this great material. Uh, After Tears Are Falling is the pap known as Shandy. Uh, Just absolutely terrible song, but it has to be on there. there. You don't like it? Yeah. Uh, it I has to be on. it has to be on there because you know it it is wow. technically a hit off that album I suppose so hmm. uh, then we have of course another great song from Asylum who wants to be lonely is on there hmm. as well uh, I, it would be a crime not to put that song on there and then last on this side is a song that I, I whenever I go see Kiss Live I dread when they play this song now but. You know, it would it has to be on the record. I just nuts lick it up. Now, mm-hmm. attentive people would realize that, much like double platinum, if my memory serves me correctly, this is an entirely Paul side, and I'm pretty sure there's an entirely Paul side on double platinum too. I'm not sure which side it is, but there is one where he sings every song on a side. So, in mm-hmm. in in a tribute to Paul Stanley, uh, side B is completely Paul Stanley. Hmm. Okay. Wow. Would you look at that? Um, <laughs> mine starts with Lick It Up. And it's an interesting story how that ended up there. Because I did my list, and then I realized I'd forgotten Lick It Up, the album. But, oh, really? Wow. So I had I had to kick out two songs to make sure I included some of Lick It Up. Because I tried to cover you know, something from every album, because this, again, is um, a catalog you know, representation of the band's yeah. catalog that serves as a sale pitch. That if you like that, there's more of it where it came from. So, um, that's Lick It Up got on there because it's the biggest song from that album. Uh, and it's really not that bad. People have only hated it because it became an eight minute sludge fest. Yeah, so it over and over. yeah and, and it's been overdone, but it's still an important band, uh, catalog song. All right. And I followed up with I Still Love You because, again, Paul is Paul. And that song's going on this album, no matter what, because we know he's proud of this song, as is he of Tears Are Falling. So this is really a Paul-heavy um, side of the album. And I think there's a certain one-noteness to it as well. When you think of Lick It Up, I Still Love You, Tears Are Falling, they're kind of in a similar vein. Um, mm-hmm. And then I break things up with The World Without Heroes. Because yeah. you got to have so Mazarin. Oh. And Gene. Just, just to you annoy. could have said Gene, you know. Just to, just to annoy Mark. Um, and then I end with Tomorrow. I am having Tomorrow on this album because yes. it never got a yeah. fair shot in. Absolutely. Um, in 1980. All right. So it's interesting to note that, you know, when I went through all of our list, we selected a grand total of 31 different Kiss songs. Um, but we only agreed on 10. Hmm. And that is pretty shocking for, you know. Maybe 11 if you count I Was Made For Love New, even though mine is the uh, re-record. That's just for Mark. Mark. <laughs> God. David Donnelly Damn. is just throwing stones at Mark <laughs> from across the pond. Surely uh, Lick It Up 86, re-record <laughs> produced by Bob Ezra with orchestration and the L.A. Pensioners Choir in full voice. <laughs> I like the idea of the pensioners choir wow. there, but all right, let's I'm get sure back. How that would sound. We're gonna flip the vinyl. 
uh, put it back in the dust sleeve and pull out the other vinyl side C side C mark kick us off oh okay well my side C is you know it, it doesn't have as much of a formula to it except for the fact that you know it's again some songs that are maybe not the first thing you would expect war machine opened my side C uh, great song I've always loved that song and like I said before in a previous episode it was even more loved later on when I realized that one of my favorite wrestlers ECW Taz used to come out on you know in the ring to war machine so I was very pleased with that so that went even higher up on my level of you know enjoyment uh, next was uh, another song from the elder oh, God. Uh, I had to put something else on there from that album Who's and there was only uh, <laughs> by that guy boob Ezra in there uh, and uh, the only other song that's worth mentioning from this album I, I'm going to say is I so I decided to put that on there you know uh, actually, if I was smart, I, I should have put the, the the thing at the end after it. What's like? What, what do they name that? They, they even have a track listing for it before. I forget what it's called. The the little segment after I. I remember. I remember oh, Julian. Yeah. Ba- well, it, the, it's in a book that Tim and I did. Um, yeah, and but... and actually, you did a video about the. Uh, you had some pressings of the elder that yeah, you I showed once on a video, and you actually <laughs> showed a, a pressing from South Korea or something that that had a. Yeah, the summoning. Yeah, the summoning. There you go. I but should have put it, that on. It had, it had multiple names, by the way. So I should have called it. Yeah, I should have put the summoning stolen. on instead of I. That would have been better. But uh, the I put I on. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the third song is I've Had Enough Into the Fire. I always mm-hmm. thought that's a great opener. Kiss always does good openers. That's one thing you can always count on on a Kiss record, no matter what, is they always have a good opener. The rest of the record, meh. You know, some are better than others, but the openers are always stellar. And then I'm sure Julian was pleased to see that my fourth song on this side is Dirty Living. I always thought that this was a uh, overlooked song. I thought it was pretty good. And uh, I think that it really fit the overall style of Dynasty very well. I thought that this is a very New Yorkish song. And uh, hats off to Peter for writing it. And I ended, ended my side C with a Gene Simmons classic, I Love It Loud. I remember, I said this once before too, when I got that uh, compilation uh, VHS tape from my collecting days at the uh, you know KISS conventions there, uh, the, the, they had the Creatures of the Night comp, and they had like about 90 versions or 90 showings of that video, and I was so sick of the song after that video because all they were showing was that song, all the, that video, all the time. So, But it's still a great song, and the production of it is top notch. Yeah, so C1, I go a, a bit weird, um, but I think I'll go to Ken next. Oh, I'm okay. Losing, I'm losing my track. <clears throat> All there right. Again. There we go. I'm back. C, track. side C. Uh, starts off with Tears Are Falling from Asylum, um, and then it goes into 2000 Man. I think I'm, I'm going to pick 2000 Man. Um, so I got You are. That's my second uh, ace song I picked. Mm-hmm. Um, and then comes the little turn. I put in a, the deep cut, Burn, Bitch, Burn. <laughs> Gotta get that in there. Wow. I like that song. That's just gratuitous <laughs> use of Gene Simmons material. Yes, yes Utter, it is. Utterly unacceptable. I like it. <clears throat> I like the riff. I just like it. So <laughs> <laughs> that's inside C right in the middle. Just um, in case I'll... anyone needs a bathroom break in the middle of the double platinum. So. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> So, followed by then Creatures of the Night, and then it ends uh, that side with I Love It Loud. Kind of like same as uh, Mark's ended on Side C with the same Yeah, I, I tried to avoid putting two songs on the same album, um, but just with how I screwed up not having to get up in it, get kind of, you know, I didn't have mm-hmm. any choice. So I kick off um, the second piece of vinyl with I Love It Loud because I think that's a great opening song for vinyl yes um and then we go yeah at this point everything gets a bit screwed up it's almost like i randomized it in excel as well because sure knows something i figure it's the second single from dynasty it's got to be on there because i think paul stanley would 
pretty much be in command here. Um, mm -hmm. Middle of this one is another Paul Stanley song, which probably should never have been anywhere near um, a single, but it was, and it was an edit. It was an edit. Um, so I put on Thrills in the Night, one of yes. the most turgid, horrendous singles I think I like they ever it. released. I just I think, like it. it's I think I've, it's right up there with Burn, Bitch, Burn for me. So. <laughs> Um, then we have the second of the forgotten songs, and I was only able to squeeze two songs in from Lick It Up because I wasn't cutting any more of the other ones that I'd already pre-selected. Um, and it was really tough not to go with a million from one, but I didn't even think about it until I saw it on one of your lists. Um, yeah. All Hell's Breaking Loose, second single, never really got what I think it should have in terms of performance. Mm. I think it's a, a really fun song. Um, it was really different in terms of kiss material and i end this one uh with a firecracker the oath now yes. mark was saying earlier that kiss has always had great opening songs mm -hmm. fanfare <laughs> well uh, and then that and that proves my point though about how terrible a producer bob ezrin is because only he would put something so foolish at the beginning of an album like that yep Okay, nineteen sequences of the elder. Later, they did change it to the oath, uh, which did make things all better. All right, let's go into our final disc, and then I want to ask you about some of the things that you had to omit, and I'll tell you what I ended up having to delete. So, Ken, get us started with your final side. Final side um, leads off first song tomorrow, which, like you said earlier, should have been a should have been a hit song for them. Um, and then followed by Not For The Innocent from Lick It Up, followed by The Oath from The Elder, and then followed by, and I think the last two, I should have switched it the other way, but whatever. I put it, I put War Machine as number four. I probably should have put it at five. And uh, A Million to One, though, I put it at number five. But I, I would switch those now just looking at them. I would end with one more machine and put yeah. uh, a million to Call one at number first. four. Yeah. So you're going to end the whole album on a million to one. Well, not really. That's why I said I'm going to switch it now. Edit. A little edit. Uh, end with the more machine. <laughs> All right. Yep. I like that. I approve. All right. Okay. You, can, you can keep that. All right, Mark. Final side of your. <clears throat> I'm just counting how many Gene songs there are on Ken's list. <clears throat> That's a staggering amount, isn't it? <clears throat> so for my side D, I again start the side with a great opener. And every side should have a great opener. And this one is no exception. We have Exciter from Lick It Up. So I'm kind of surprised that I put this much stuff actually from Lick It Up on there. Uh, because not, not that I don't like Lick It Up, but, you know, it isn't my, fa my favorite, but that's definitely a great song. Then something interesting I just noticed because uh, Julian said that, you know, he started his side with a great song and then put a really odd song next. I kind of did the same thing. I put Sure No Something right after Exciter, which is probably a really odd thing to put right after such a hard-hitting song to have this nice little disco-y bass. Do, 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 right after that. That's I mean, a hell of a speed bump. Yes, exactly. But... We picked things back up from this great album, Unmasked, and put on a song that I agree with Julian 100% that this is a song that should have been a, a well, I mean, I don't know, I don't remember if it was actually put as, out as a single, but if it was, then it was poorly pushed, uh, and that's Tomorrow, one of the best songs off of this album, for sure, yeah. uh, and it deserves to be on here. And my sole and only Ace Freely appearance ah, is Talk To Me, uh, on here, I put that on in the fourth position. And what better way to end an album like this, but with a real, you know, 10 star party song, and that is Uh All Night, the classic that is that song from Asylum. I mean, you, you talk about Detroit Rock City and all that, forget that, man. Uh All Night, that's where it's at. Okay. So that's how you end an album. It's a party. I agree. <laughs> I, no, I do. That's the last song on my side as well, because uh, again, it was, you know, what kind of has the same sort of a plum as, you know, rock and roll all night. Well, uh, all night. Mm -hmm. uh, so 
that's where the similarities kind of end. That one is a classic and the other was a single, but I'll, I'll give it, I'll give it that. But my side four starts with the benefit of being able to edit my spreadsheet while we're talking. And mm -hmm. it's going to be the live version of Heaven's on Fire, which was the B-side uh, oh. to our falling single in Europe yeah. or many European markets. So um, strictly because the Welshman brought it up and I'm able to go, wow, that's a great idea. I wish I thought of it, but I'm going to cop to ripping that idea <laughs> off um, live forward. And I follow it up with Naked City. I'm, mm -hmm. That song has to be on my album as does mm -hmm. I in the middle, because again, it's an anthem, it's a big deal, and I'm absolutely ashamed of myself. I've got no Peter and no Ace. Mm. Oh, Song, man. Uh, you know, vocals. And both, wow. of you both of you covered that, and I did not, and I feel dirty. I feel, <laughs> yeah, I should wow. be handing in my Kiss Army badge right now. Um, but you know how Double Platinum had the rock bottom intro tacked onto She? Mm -hmm. it had an instrumental on it so i wanted to follow that format and there's really only one thing that could go oh. on um and it was of course escape from the island yeah. which mm -hmm. i use i use as an intro to uh, all night because it makes as much sense as rock bottom interesting <laughs> so that that's how that's how mine kind of ends it up um you know I said that all of us agreed on Creatures of the Night, Heavens on Fire, I, I Love It Loud, Lick It Up, Naked City, Tears Are Falling, The Oath, Tomorrow, and War Machine. So I think we can give ourselves a round of applause for agreeing on those. Mm -hmm. I think 2000 and Man, 2000 Man, Burn Bitch, Burn. Um, yeah, those those are out there. Uh, as <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, so Opal Archive. No, we can't have that New York group because the this time double platinum passed. two format uh, only takes into account the studio albums released, um, the Kiss studio albums. Yeah, you know, even though that's, that's a long, I... we could do a, a whole debate about whether the solo albums are Kiss albums because they do have Kiss logos on them, and they were called the Kiss albums, but. That's a whole different show that I think we've probably already done a couple of times. And you know, you mentioned the thing about uh, Rock and Roll Night, you know, ending, but you know, on Double Platinum, it, it wasn't at the end of the uh, album. It no, was, but I want, was, I want, I want to, I want to, three or something. I want to, I want to end with something like Rock and Roll All Night as the uplifting sure. anthem to close out the set. Yeah. Um, and I can't remember the track order to Double Platinum. I can't even remember the last what? time I listened to it. <laughs> I know it starts with Strutter 78. There you go. Yeah. And I know it has an instrumental in an odd place. And it's got a couple of remixes. Of, well, yeah. Remasters True. in some sense because no one yeah. remixes Bob Ezrin. Um, mm -hmm. But I think anything would have been better in 1986 to buy them that time. And it's either a live album or a double platinum too would have made a lot of sense, wouldn't it? Yeah, while we're waiting for the next, you know, studio album to come along, uh, which kind of took some time, right? So, I was, I would have been happy to have that, you know, come out at this time or at that time. Yeah, it would have been the perfect album at that time for me as someone who was just discovering the Kiss catalog exactly. in '85. Yeah. You know, '86, I did buy Double Platinum and Alive and Alive Two, you know, and then all the other catalog albums. But if there had been a Double Platinum Two, I would have been on that i could fly to shit so it, it would have been a, a really great one smashes thrashes and hits doesn't go anywhere near i think the o only compilation i've seen worldwide that does the band justice after double platinum is probably that brazilian o rock to kiss mm. which is two lps it, it's got a ton of shit on it i mean the australian the kiss singles uh licensed compilation you know was not half bad either in terms of what it featured mm -hmm. though it was more like a K tell album for having it all on one disc Chikara almost you know Chikara was okay I mean Japan only um I think yeah. it did a better job and someone did mention um yeah here we go at least on smashes they finally made room for shout it out loud replacing smashes mm -hmm with double platinum two would mean that song wouldn't get an airing again so yeah th there is yeah, that 
but at least no one been around with the drums. But then they oh. also had that. Uh, remember that gold record that was like a two CD thing that came out that went chronologically. Yep. There, that was it. That I thought that was a really good greatest hits. That's though. more around two thousand or so. When did yeah. that come out? Okay. Well, the very best of Kiss came out in two thousand and two. Um, and after that, it was Millennium Best of in what 2003, 2004. Lots 2005. of best of. Yeah, the shit just started coming. Um, <laughs> you know, the very best yeah. of uh, yeah, at least a got one. a certification. Millennium, you know, went gold, and who knows what else. So I was happy when those went gold simply because actually, I got to see if I can get a gold award for uh, the very best of Kiss. So that'd be kind of cool to have. Mm. All right, let's go into a, a couple of um, anyone, unless you have any final thoughts on double platinum too. No, no final no. thoughts. Just, just that I, th I think it would have been a cool had they, you know, done it. In, you know, yeah. Do you remember that? I, I don't know. I was looking for it all day, and I, I could not find. There was an ad. I and I don't know if it was an ad or whether it was a prototype ad of the Kiss logo with metallic silver being poured into like a, a cast. Um, would have made a great cover because it's hmm. almost like lit liquid platinum and someone will be hmm. able to find that but i, I can't even remember the context that it was used i thought it dated from about 88 so it would have been somewhat timely for that uh but who knows all right we got a couple of topics from the board that are probably worth discussing over the last few minutes um the first one ken I want to yes. start with you as someone who is an originals fan, meaning that you became a fan in the originals era. Uh, Soylent Gene <laughs> has the audacity of saying Kiss is 1973 to 78. And that goes to everyone who's listening live. Uh -oh. Is Kiss only 1973 to 78? Everything after that pales in comparison, except for perhaps Creatures of the Night, those original gangster uh, magical five years. That is what Kiss will be remembered for. So that's almost a double-barreled question. Pontificate your reasonableness. I can understand uh, the sentiment there um, about you know the classic era of Kiss and how that lots of it, you know, is is the standard, I guess, for Kiss in general. The original, you know, four members and all that that stuff, but um, you know, what well, Kiss doesn't really end for me. It doesn't end there, but that that's a special period of time for me. I think is it's my favorite period of time for Kiss music, um, but that doesn't negate that it did. They did have a lot of great music that came after, you know, yeah, with again creatures and lick it up. Which are to me great non or one of not makeup but standout albums, um, and then uh, Revenge was pretty darn good. Uh, sure, uh, even you know Animal Eyes, of course Asylum, was you know pretty darn good on its own too. Um, but uh, yeah, it's you kind of you can kind of have to separate them into their own little periods of you know you have that original period and then you have the uh after that when you have new members and the non-makeup era and then you have the after reunion era kind of mm. stuff so uh yeah i kind of break them out look at them different that way but yeah my favorite era is that early you know the early stuff of course um but that may be different for some people that got into them you know later in the 80 you know in the 80s like you guys did so yeah, so Mark, as a yes. fellow 85-er, um, is that what KISS will be remembered for, 73 to 78, and that's it? I hope not, because there are many other things that are just as good, in my opinion, and if not better. I mean, this is just my opinion. Of course, I know people are going to hit the roof when I say stuff like that, but, you know, the first, the first six albums were good, but, you know, there's there's weak stuff on those records, too, people. Don't kid yourself, you know? There's there's stuff on there that's not anywhere near as good as you know people think. You know, it's it's just because people hold those albums in such high esteem because you know back in those days, Kiss was a very you know very 
uh, you know, different sort of band at that time. You know, nobody was doing what they were doing live, especially. But on record, you know, the, the, that that the, the, they they were a rock band. There was lots of rock bands out there. What sold them was their live show. But I I feel personally that as the band continued, they got better musically. You know, when Bruce Kula came in. And from then on in, I thought that they went up a three or four notches as a live band, in my opinion. And when Eric Carr came in, I mean, what couldn't that guy? What, what that guy couldn't do, could do everything, you, you know, on drums. You know, I, I think that it's fantastic how what how what he added to the band. You know, so for me, uh, I, I always think highly of Unmasked and albums like you know Asylum, which Asylum is my favorite album without makeup, and and it ranks very high. It's in the top three for me of Kiss albums. So for me, it's not the top, the first six, you know, the, yeah, they're classic albums and there's lots of stuff on there too, but there's lots of bunk on there too. And she, then she kissed me and all kinds of stuff. Come on guys. There's not, it's not all gold. It's a lot of crap on these records too, you know? So I wouldn't just go in with that and say, Oh, the first six are the, there's nothing else after that. That's you're, you're leaving yourself a whole world of music that you could be enjoying. If you're going to think that way. Yeah. Sadly, I, I think putting emotion aside for, for myself, it's going to be what 73 to 78 that is remembered because those are those are the days and the memories um, of when Kiss ruled the earth in a sense. And I think even more sadly is that you know fellow bands like Aerosmith will probably be more remembered for the MTV era than Rocks. Right. That's you true. know, mm-hmm. and run DMC with Walk This Way, that collab, that a lot of their earlier history is seemingly being lost in the din of Alicia Silverstone and, you know, Angel, Dude, and some of the novelty songs. That's not to say that Walk This Way wasn't a novelty song, uh, because it was a tongue-in-cheek song. But I think Kiss will be remembered for its original era. And just because those that is the foundation for them, I don't think it's going to denigrate everything that came after. I think everything that came after proves that they were a band that refused to go away, mm-hmm. that they refused to call time on their career until they had no other choice than to call time. Because I think if they could still be going, they yeah. still would be. Um, but everything has kind of caught up. Um, in a doom loop now. So 73 to 78 is where it's about in terms of everything that does come after, but that doesn't mean that everything that came after isn't worth a damn because I became a fan in the afterwards. Mm -hmm. And just because I went back and value um, the original catalog much more than the later catalog doesn't mean I don't love Asylum as much as I love Rock and Roll Over. And I play those two albums equally. One, because it's important to me emotionally. And the other, because I think it's important to me artistically for what I see the band sounding like. So it's going to be great to see how people do cherry pick, you know, because everything comes back in fashion eventually, you know. Mm-hmm. True. Who knows on the KISS FAQ 17 board, um, you know. <laughs> 50 years from now, maybe it'll be the Unmasked Appreciation Society. And if it's not your favorite album, then you're clearly, you know, a three eyed monster. Yeah. So it's yeah. fun. None of it matters, and all of it does. Because uh, True. Opal Archive always has great comments. Uh, along with Where's Drago? Um, <laughs> the fifth member is the culture surrounding it. That's, yeah very very true it's the moment what makes zeitgeist zeitgeist it's about the moment how it catches on in the imagination of the popular, of popular mm. culture which is why current music sucks ass so much because i don't get that moment all the stuff that is popular is either the wrong demographic for me that i i just don't have a clue right. or any reference point to understand it or even want to or it, it's get off my lawn there's other, <laughs> there's other good music coming out nowadays, but it's not on the radio. Oh, Kiss turned me on to good music, but, it, but it's not, it's not on the radio though. See, that's the no. Thing. I mean, is anyone you have to go find it? You dialing into Crownlands or Mondo Drag, hmm. the Watchers? No, there's a lot of great music out there. Great, love the Crownlands. 
that that shit is some of the very best music I've heard in a very long time. And I did finally watch that live performance. Holy crap. Yeah, good, eh? It is. It is. I, I mean, number one, I can't believe they're having them open because you're going to see two guys, uh, two people, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, making a hell of a artistic racket on their own where yeah. it, it, it's just so incredibly impressive. All right, there we are. We're an hour. I've got a headache from my COVID booster shot, and the jets flying around, the jets flying. and the and the the San Francisco. There they come. Cute. Yeah, okay, one last flyby. They're just flipping me off right now. So and barrel rolls, right? It's like your window. All right. So I want to thank everyone for chiming in with their comments and for joining us live today. If you're catching up on this, you know, do chime in. It was double platinum too. The six albums that follow the first double mm -hmm. platinum. What songs would you put on? Um, keeping it to a 20 song format. Um, we had some of our picks. Tell us what you think. Who had the best double <laughs> platinum two in your opinion? And it's usually Ken because he's so sensitive. Not usually me. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. It's seldom me. Um, but for now, Lonnie obviously couldn't join us today. Hopefully, we'll see him again soon. But we yeah. hope to see you again as well. But for now, from Mark, Lonnie, myself, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for spending time listening to the Kiss FAQ podcast today. All sales are final, there are no refunds. If you'd like, look us up on Facebook or come over to the Kiss FAQ message board and discuss the topic we've broadcast today. Don't forget to rate us on iTunes, Spreaker, or wherever you've listened to the show. We hope you'll join us again.